Okay, we're going to begin today. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the webinar on paint refinishing ICAR training presented by Norton St. Cobain and hosted by Impact. I'm Melissa Joles with RDA Impact and Craig Chafee, the training manager for Norton St. Cobain is your presenter for this presentation. It will take approximately 45 to 50 minutes and we are recording the webinar and we'll post it on our website under training videos. If you have any questions, you can type them in the chat box at the bottom right of your screen, and I'll give them to Craig as I receive them during the presentation. Craig is going to explain to you uh, what you'll need to do in order to get the ICAR credit, and I will follow up with everybody on the call and send you the information. Now I'm going to turn it over to Craig. Thanks, Craig. Melissa. Welcome, everyone. As Melissa mentioned, we're, this is our uh, one-hour paint refinishing course, and I'll go over the agenda in just a minute. We've been part of the ICAR Training Alliance since 2008. Uh, you might notice the ASC certified training provider. We, we are an ASC certified training provider, but we don't offer any ASC courses per se, because that seems to be more uh, the mechanical side. So we're going to focus on the auto body side today. And of course, um, we do do classes up in Canada. If anybody's uh, with us from Canada, welcome. Um, I'm the training manager for North America for St. Cobain Norton, as uh, Melissa mentioned. So the agenda for today, you'll see on a second here on the screen. So I think it will. <laughs> it was working a minute ago. Yeah, we flipped through the slides just a minute ago. Let's see what's going on here. Pardon me. Let's go here. All right, we'll go back to slide mode. There we go. Um, so what we're going to cover today are some masking techniques. We're going to show you some videos. Uh, we're also going to talk about our new paint cup system, which is actually covered in a separate class. We can go in a lot more detail on that some other time, if you'd like. And we're also going to talk about some sanding and buffing applications. Uh, as Melissa mentioned, um, there is a test. It's a multiple choice question test that needs to be sent uh, to me to get credit for the class, and I'll show you that at the end, and also the application on how to get credit for the folks that are interested. So that's the agenda for our time together. The first subject we're going to cover is masking. We have a, a wide variety of masking products, anywhere as you can see here from floor mats to double-sided tape. We're mostly going to focus on masking uh, tape, fine line tape, also, uh, foam tape for using in the jams, and you'll see why in a video, why we recommend that for best practices. Uh, sheeting and masking paper will also be covered. By the way, all of these videos that we're about to show you are on our website, nortonautomotive.com, and they're in our best practices uh, category. They are also, uh, we're also on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all that fun stuff. And for any of those folks that have QR code readers, uh, either on their uh, tablets or uh, smartphones, you can see the, the, the actual QR codes are in the presentation where you can actually uh, view it on your phone or your tablet with a QR reader. But uh, if you don't, no problem, you can go right to our website and look at the video. So the first thing I'd like to show you is a uh, masking best practice video. It features Peter Clute from Dream Car Garage. If you're unfamiliar with him, he had a show on Discovery Channel for quite some time. Now he has a new show called Legendary Motor car, that's the actual name of his business, and that's featured on the Velocity channel, which is part of the Speed Channel network. But Peter does a nice job showing you some best practices on a pretty nice vehicle that I won't uh, ruin it for you. So here's the video, and enjoy. Lots of chrome all over the place. Around all, Oops, sorry. Around all the windshields, there's stainless steel molding. The only place you really have rubbers is in the door jams. Well, today's cars are totally different. There's no chrome anymore. There's lots of rubber. The, the windshields are flush mounted. The side rubbers here extend well into the panel. And of course, the door jams, there's a rubber tucked behind there. Well, best practices has a way of masking a car properly, and it involves some premium trim tape. 
beauty of this tape here is it's got about three quarters of an inch of mylar which slides underneath the rubber and doesn't catch. Then it allows you to kind of lift the rubber up and out of the way. Then the sticky portion of the tape can be stuck down to either the glass or the bodywork itself. Nice way to get the rubber up and out of the way and get paint right underneath it. One of the things with best practices is making sure there's no overspray in the door jams. And one of the ways to do it is with this premium foam tape. The nice thing with this foam tape is the fact that it's got to split up the middle. And it also has an offset sticky portion here. About 20 mils wide, which is great for the aid pillar. It's pretty simple to put on and make sure that there's no overspray in the jams. The nice thing, too, is you can use that split as your guide for how far you should be going in. The idea is not to stretch it. I'm going to just get it behind there. The other nice thing, too, is you can pull it off and push it back down, and it remains nice and sticky. And you can just close the door and then use the spreader just to push it in as far as you want. Depends what sort of pattern you want there and how much you want to go into the jam. And the blend line will pretty much be visible. Now we've got a standard foam tape, a round foam tape that works great on the stationary position here. Now the thing is you don't want to pull on the foam again, you just want it to lay down without any tension on it. again just to adjust the foam to where you're happy with it. Now the other option again is to use the premium foam on the moving part of the door instead of the standard foam on the fixed part. And it's a slick way as well. And what you want to make sure is just that you have the sticky part just going to the edge. You don't get any hard lines. You just use your spreader and adjust the foam to where you want it. So for some of the trim now, you're going to use fine line. And that will allow us to work around some tight corners. We've got eight, we've got quarter inch, and we've got half inch. We're going to start with the eight here on the door pad. What it allows us to do is get right in the edge there. Okay, we're going to do the same around the mirror trying to get it in as tight as we can.
Now we're going to bag the entire car. And the nice thing, again, it's a poly coating, so it clings. You can tape over it. And it's corona treated, which means the paint sticks to it. doesn't flake off as it, as it gets twisted and moved around. along the critical masking edge. We're going to do it across the top of the door, the front of the door, and the rear of the door. Okay, a couple things I want to point out there for you is uh, if you're unaware of it, there is three-quarter available, three-quarter inch fine line tape. So if you don't get that hard edge, especially if you're doing some flame work, there are four sizes available in, in fine line tape. So you got eighth, you got quarter, you got half, and there is also a three-quarter. Also, another thing I want to point out is that masking paper that was shown there, the unique thing about it besides the fact that it has its own built-in paint check to check for coverage, it also, you can reposition masking tape on it. It won't tear like some of the blue product. We do have a blue product that's mostly for primer in terms of masking paper. But the neat thing about that paper, besides the built-in coverage paint check and the flexibility, and it's good for waterborne or solvent paint, you can reposition the tape on there and it won't tear. So you're not wasting any paper or product like that. So that, in a nutshell, is masking. Peter did a nice job going through the whole line from the, the fine line tape to the the foam tape inside the jams to help with overspray, eliminate some back masking, because after sanding, the second biggest labor killer in a body shop is masking. So uh, the, being more productive, less waste, obviously, is going to help any of the collision centers that are out there. So once we have the vehicle mass, then we wanna, we're going to have to paint it. Well, something that you might not have been aware of, uh, St. Cobain Norton has just brought on the DeVilbus line as of February 1st. And uh, they have a very neat line. It's been around for about 10 years. They have three standard sizes of uh, disposable paint cups with the market going more and more waterborne. Uh, a plastic cup is required uh, if it's nicely with their particular guns. But the cup sizes are 9 ounce, 24 ounce, and 34 ounce. So they have a, a pretty good size small cup. It's a typical liner hard shell system, as you can see in the picture. Um, there's adapters to fit. All other guns, not only DeVilbus' guns, the 24 ounce is a good size medium cup, which seems to be the most popular. And then, of course, they have a very good size large or 34 ounce cup. So um, DeVilbus does a nice job. They even offer a four-hour ICAR class called Spray Master. You see the logo there in the corner of the screen. Um, but the line pretty much consists of color-coded boxes for everything that fits within the, the, the small, the medium, or the large. Um, they all they fit your standard HBLP guns. The assembly is pretty simple. You put the adapter onto the gun first. Uh, you put your assembly together, which is a liner system with the hard cup and the hard shell. And then you actually thread that onto the actual gun. Uh, DeVilbus has a, a number of other products that are also available. They have uh, other paint handling products, as you can see in the little logo there. They do have air filtration. And they even have uh, clean products for, like, wipes. And there's a really neat product called a shim mask for doing some denibbing, 
which we'll get into in a minute. But all of these particular products are covered in their Spray Master course, which is another four-hour class um, that they offer. Um, they even offer 6-H training. So if, if any of the shops out there need some 6-H training to, uh, to make sure they're within compliance, our friends at DeVilvis and our, and our sales force can help you with that. So we even offer a separate uh, paint cup best practices course. It's another hour course that we have, and I'll show you that in a list of our 13 classes that are available. But I just wanted to touch on and let you know that there are cups available from St. Cobain Norton, and they're the DeVilvis brand, which some people are familiar with. So as you can see, some of the bullet points, uh, better flow for better color match, positive locking, it's not going to come off the gun. Um, you can refill it without having to open up the actual cup. It even comes with some funnels, which uh, if you're using premixed paint, it's a self-dispensing packaging system, and the large capacity 34-ounce cups, I believe, is one of the largest in the market. So um, that's all I'll talk about on paint cups because there, there is a totally separate class, and, of course, DeVilvis even has a four-hour class, which gets into all of their products that we just mentioned. So after we sprayed the vehicle, we've either done our primer, our base coat, our clear coat, whatever stage uh, throughout the repair that we need to do. We have to sand, well, we don't have to, but sometimes we have to sand and buff. So I'm going to show you another video. Uh, Peter does a nice job showing DA sanding, which uh, a lot of shops are going dry because you can see the nibs a whole lot better. It's not as messy. You don't have to worry about the water. And, of course, wet sanding is very labor intensive. No, know some shops still do it. As a matter of fact, Peter's shop does it on a regular basis, but they're not your typical production shop. Um, because labor is not an issue when they're doing restoration. But anyways, Peter also will, will go through the buffing steps, um, and I'll even elaborate on some points that might help people pass the test uh, at the end, and then, of course, he'll talk about some cleanup there. And then uh, when we're done, I'll also introduce uh, two other partners of ours that you see their logos up here. Dynabrade we brought on last year, so we have their full line of tools. Um, and also mother's compound. So we have a couple different alternatives when it comes to buffing. But we'll talk about that after Peter shows you uh, an overview of the line first. So let me show you another video. Defect removal and buffing, as I mentioned, this is on our website. It's on YouTube and all that fun stuff. So here we go. come out of the booth, you can do one of two things. You can deliver it to the customer or you can cut and polish it. And York has come up with a really slick system. It starts from A to Z, takes you right through. And it's not for the show car that's going to go to Pebble Beach or going to try and win the Riddler. It's for great street cars and, and cars that you're going to show but you don't have to spend 50 hours cutting and polishing. We're going to start with the Dry Ice 1500. And it's real simple. It goes on a DA and this is all done dry. You're just going to start over the panel, and it's like a DA. You're going to start cutting that panel down. And what you want here is just to cut nice and consistently and nice and evenly. Now you can see, you have the orange peel here, and you can see as we go down, it's sanded totally out. It's a smooth finish so the light can refract properly. Well, the next step we want to do is we want to go to the 3000 grit, the foam finishing disc. So we're going to remove the 1500. You can see it's actually got a foam backing on it. And it's almost a little bit porous where it's going to take some of the dirt away and it's actually going to help with pigtails. And what a pigtail is, is basically a chunk of dirt gets, gets stuck and it gets spun around there and it's going to create a big scratch. At this point too, you want to wet down the system a little bit. You don't have to go nuts here, but you want it at least a little bit damp. Then we're ready to just take a microfiber again and just see exactly what we've got as far as if there's any imperfections left on the panel before we start polishing. And the next stage is polishing. And they have a real simple system. They have three different pads. You see one, two, and three. Start off with number one. You're going to put it on your polishing. If you want an adjustable polisher, so you want to start out with roughly 1,000 RPM with the coarse wool pad, because this will cut aggressively. Okay, then what we're going to use, they've got an extra cut, they're liquid ice. And you're just going to put a little bit on, and you don't need a whole ton. And before you just fire this thing up, you want to put a little spritz of water on there. Okay, and don't just fire it up, or you're going to make a mess. So just roll it around first, and then go nice and slow. And make 
make sure that you always cut off the edge. So never always have the, the rotation of the polisher working off the panel, not onto the panel, off an edge, not onto an edge, because that's how you'll burn it. And trust me, it doesn't take long to burn a panel. Now we're ready to go to something a little bit finer. So we're going to go to the blue foam pad. Stick that on. Add a little. And we still have some compound there. So we'll use it up. And we're also going to increase the RPM a little bit here. It's about 1,500 RPM. You can already see how nice it's coming up. You can just use your hand, too, to see if you're creating any heat. That's what the water is going to do. It's going to help cool it as it's cutting it. You don't want to push too hard because you're going to create too much heat and you'll have to have the chance of burning it. Once you've got virtually all the scratches removed, you're down to the last pad, the number three pad, which is a really fine pad. And you use a little bit more of the cutting compound. Again, I always like to just have a little bit of water on there. Again, we're going to stay at about the 1500 RPM. And this doesn't have to be super wet. And when it starts to jump like that, that means you're creating too much friction, give it a little bit more water. Now you're ready to use their liquid ice, which is basically a detailer. We use this on the cars in the showroom all the time. But you can show you exactly what you've got. And if you've missed any spots at this stage, you can go back to any step and just redo it. You can see the new North system. They have it down pat. They have all the pads. They have all the materials that you're going to need. They have all the sandpapers. It's almost idiot proof. Just watch the edges, and you're going to get a show quality finish in half the time of the, of the traditional method. Well, if this were a dark colored car as opposed to this gold metallic, we'd be using this for the final step, the ultra fine machine glaze. It makes the dark colors just pop. That's best practices, defect removal, and buffing. All right. A um, couple things I want to point out there in the video because they'll be on the test for folks that want to take it. Um, the speeds of the wool pad, which is your most aggressive pad for removing scratches, is around 1,000 to 1,200 RPMs. And Peter also noted once he got the second and third pad, the foam pads, he kicked it up to around 1,500 RPMs. Um, as you can see, it kind of grabbed a little bit, so the faster you go, the more lubrication you get, the better, uh, less chatter or vibration you're going to get when buffing. A couple other things I want to point out, that's footage that was actually on the show um, some time ago, but the 3000 grit product that he showed was yellow in color. It's actually pink in color now, so we've upgraded it. Um, we actually even have um, 1,000, I'm sorry, 1,500 and 2,000 grit moist paper. So if you have some pretty heavy texture that you're trying to get out in your clear coats, we have a little more aggressive grit that's there. He used the 1500 dry, which is the best way um, to get your defects and removals out, plus you can see them very well. But some people are of the opinion, if I'm going to go 3000 wet anyways, can I use a 15 or a 2000 grit wet? And that, that's available in the 6 inch pad that you saw, and they're also available in 3 inch. A couple other things I want to point out too, you might have noticed the blue masking paper in the background. Um, that's our standard product that's good for solvent, uh, for primer, for things like that. Also, the buffing pads that were used, they're now available in waffle pads. They've become very popular in the market, especially with the on and off cutting. They cut a little cooler, but also get the job done relatively quickly. Also, uh, our friends at Dynabrate offer a, a very nice buffer. He had a different buffer there in the video um, than we use now. There's a Dynabrate buffer. It has a 180-degree rotating head where the trigger and the handle is with a variation of the speeds are. It just makes life easier depending on different contours that you're buffing. Also, um, the glaze that he mentioned at the end is a tech tip for a dark-colored car. So we even made that bottle black so that people know for the darker-colored cars that they're looking to get a little extra pop, a little more shine, a little more gloss, they can replace um, the third step with the original liquid ice compound and use the glaze to get a little extra pop. Um, the liquid ice products are all silicon free, body shop friendly, waterborne, easy cleanup. So if you get them on the tires, trims, jam, wherever you get on there uh, when you're buffing, 
they're just going to wash off with water. Matter of fact, Peter and the guys at uh, Dream Car actually took the liquidized compound and spread it all over some black trim on the show and actually put it through the bake cycle and showed that it just spritzed off with water. So the cleanup is very user friendly, I should say, um, in terms of cleanup. Since the video has been done, we have brought on the Mother's line. Um, they've got a pretty unique line of polishes, waxes, and cleaners you can see in their logo. Matter of fact, we even offer a separate two-hour Mother's Best Practice course that's available, and I'll show you that on the list at the end. But I'd like to introduce the line to you and show you a video of the, the actual Mother's line that's available on our website, so I'll show you that video right now. Sound should kick in. I'd like to take this moment to introduce you to Mother's new line of professional products developed strictly for the body shop. A line of totally silicone free products. Mother's has three types of abrasive products. We have a heavy duty rubbing compound, which is designed to remove 1200 grit and finer sand scratches. Our rubbing compound is designed to remove 1500 grit and finer sand scratches. Stepping over to our machine blade, this is a very fine compound designed to remove very cleanly 3,000 grit and even finer sand scratches. It's 1,200 grit removal, 1,500 grit removal, and 3,000 grit removal, either with wool pad or foam pad. Our foam pad polish basically comes in and polishes the finish down to remove the fine swirl that's left behind after using either one of our compounds. Our hand glaze can be applied by hand. You can either wipe it on and wipe it right off, Wipe it on and let it dry, and wipe it right off. Creates an additional high gloss sheen to the finish on cured or fresh paint. Our instant detailer is a crucial product to be used throughout the entire system. It's used as a pre-cleaner before you go to compound or move any sand, sanding residue that may be left on the finish. To clean up after using the compound before going to your polishing, and also to help rejuvenate the compounds of the polishes as they may tend to dry out while buffing. This product is completely silicone free. And now I'd like to talk to you about the versatility of the mother's line of products here. We have a three-step system that we have in our, with our line, all three, utilizing either of the two compounds, either our rubbing compound with a wool or a foam pad, or our heavy-duty rubbing compound with a wool or foam pad. The second step in this system is followed up by our machine glaze which is an extremely fine abrasive compound to remove any heavy squirrel marks that may be left behind after compound. And the third and final step for squirrel removal, gloss enhancement, and color and depth into your finish, use our foam pad polish with the appropriate foam pad. And if your shop prefers a two-step system, we have either one of the two compounds, our heavy-duty rubbing compound or the rubbing compound, can be used either with a wool pad or a foam pad in that process. As the second and final step, we have our foam pad polish. This will give you a nice little tech tip on the instant detailer for all of us that have that problem when we go to buff across a black door handle or the black molding. If you take just a moment and wet that black molding down very thoroughly with the instant detailer right before you buff that area, the compound will not turn it white nor will it stick to it. So that's the mother's line that we brought on last year just gives people more options. It's a pretty unique line. A lot of people know it. Um, so you can see the different steps there. Matter of fact, the video even featured that Dynabrate buffer that I mentioned and also gives you your options whether you're a wool pad person or a foam pad person. But uh, definitely the wool pad is the most aggressive, but it's going to leave the most swirls where a foam pad is not as aggressive, but you're not going to get as many swirls. So it's a trade-off and depending on your, your preference. But just wanted to introduce you to the, the mother's line. So we went through masking, we went through painting, and then we even talked about sanding and buffing, which I mentioned all these videos and information are available on our website. There's even best practice posters. So those, those videos have come to life from best practice posters that are available to, uh, to your shops through our friends at RDA, and you can get them right off our website, as a matter of fact. So there's a masking best practices that ties in with the video. There's a sanding and buffing best practices for both the Norton Liquid Ice line and the Mother's line. 
So it's just a nice reference for the shops to put on the wall, especially if uh, you have some new people you're training in any of the areas. What are the steps? What do I need to do? And it covers all the products that you saw featured here in the video and on the presentation so far today. So with that being said, um, if there's any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the uh, chat box as part of the presentation here today. And uh, what I'd like to do before we go to the test is I'd like to show you not only the test, but also show you the, the other classes that we have to offer, plus the application on how you go to get your points. So Not many questions yet, so, but I'll let you know if we do. OK, thank you. Let me just, uh, just waiting to get out of this to show the other products, or to show the application and the actual test itself. If you close it out of there, you'll, it'll show it at the bottom of your screen. Probably. There we go. Thank you. Um, so here's the test. It's a five-question test. Um, what you have to do is fill it out. Don't worry about the instructor, the location, or the date. I usually know who I am, where I am, and what day it is. But one thing I want to point out is if you're looking to get ICAR credits, you really want to make sure you put your ICAR ID or the last four digits of your Social Security number so ICAR knows who you are. Um, and then, of course, the more information you give us, it's easier for you and for us to get you your credit. So you fill out the test, you send it to me or, or Melissa, however I get it, and then I go ahead and send the score electronically to our friends at ICAR. And then there's an application that's actually on their website, and it's on, also on our website, NortonAutomotive.com. And that same information that you filled out uh, on the test, name, address, and all those wonderful things, they want here at ICAR. Now, of course, our training is free, but ICAR has a fee for getting your credits. So any classes that are up to eight hours, it's $47. Any classes more than eight hours is $93. Um, so this is the first page of the application that needs to be sent to ICAR to that address after you've taken the training. The second page, a couple things I want to point out, that they want you to wait 45 days, because we're not the only ones that send ICAR uh, test scores. So there, there's a number of other people. All the paint companies do it. Some of our competitors do it. Um, as I mentioned, DeVilvis even offers classes. So we're not the only ones that send test scores into them. So they wait for 45 days from today to actually submit this application. If you jump the gun, you get put on a pending report. And then, of course, once we submit the scores, everything gets scored away. But it just makes life a little easier. So you fill out that you've taken the training. We're under our parent company, St. Cobain Abrasives. And here are the 13 classes that we currently offer. Matter of fact, the course that we did today is number three right here on the list, paint refinishing training. We've done some of the other one-hour classes with our friends at RDA. We've done the panel, the body panel refinishing. We've done the adhesive refinishing. I believe we've done the seam sealer class, too, because they're, they're nice to fit in a Weber like this for an hour. Um, so those are the list of our 13 classes. Also, I mentioned if your shops are interested in best practices, not only do we have the videos, the posters, we even have two or four hour classes depending on what type of training that you're looking for. Um, if you're going to get specifics into adhesives, um, want to focus more on the paint shop side, some of the things we covered today is in there. Uh, even if you want to get in particular on metal panel bonding and weld bonding, we have a course for that. Of course, I mentioned the paint cup class that's available. Uh, we even have an estimator class, and it's a professional selling skills course that helps estimators become a little better salespeople. We're not teaching them how to be better estimators. We're under the assumption that they know what they're doing there, but maybe they can help them relate to the customers a little better. I mentioned the scene sealer course, also the mother's class. We get into a lot more than just the video there on the different mother's products that are available. So there's a two-hour best practice class for that. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but the, the mother's video was actually filmed in our training center in Albany, New York. So uh, we offer uh, what we call St. Cobain School. It doesn't have to be at our training facility. We can do it out in the field. But paint companies offer anywhere from 12 to 16 hours of credit, depending on what people need for ICAR. We go through our entire line in two days. Matter of fact, we have, on average, two to 300 people go through St. Cobain School every year. So that's available as a 16-hour credit course uh, for $93 to ICAR. So this is the actual application. 
that gets sent to them 45 days from actually taking the test. So I just wanted to show that to you. That's available on our website. It's available on their, their website. And I'm sure Melissa could get it to you, too, if you needed it. So that, in a nutshell, is what we're going to talk about today. So there's the post-test. Um, the student data sheet is what I actually send. And of course, if you have any feedback on the class, we'd love to hear it, either on our website or through Melissa and our friends at RDA. So um, that's pretty much all I plan to cover today. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the chat or get to me through Melissa and our friends at RDA. OK, well, I don't have any questions. And as I said in the beginning, I'll send everybody a copy of the test. I can send them that form you just showed, too, because I have that. So I'll go ahead and send the application as well so they have everything. Super. We'll do that. OK, um, if there's no questions um, for Craig, we'll uh, go ahead and finish the webinar. And we'll follow up with everybody um, in about a half an hour. OK, so I appreciate everybody's time. and. Um, let us know what you'd like to see in the future, and we'll do our best to accommodate you and let you know um, of any upcoming webinars and opportunities that um, we have for you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Melissa. Take care. Yeah.